Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendez and welcome to my 8th anniversary special. My god, I have been doing this for 8 years. What is wrong with me? So, uh, this year, uh, I couldn't really, I, I sat around, I thought a lot because, you know, my anniversary specials are basically when I do, uh, you know, sort of a, a discussion of something that is not a book, but kind of adjacent to books. A topic that relates to, is in some way connected to the concept of books, but is not books. And so I uh, was, you know, poking around and I suddenly realized, bam, I'm running out of time. And uh, I figured, what the heck? Let's, uh, let's do something totally unexpected. Uh, we're going to talk about manuals. Uh, those little booklet things that, at, uh, you know, you sort of, you get a new electronic device and it's supposed to come with a little booklet that tells you how to turn it on and how to use it. Or, you know, like, back in ye olden days, the VCR manual. That thing that very few people read, which I know very few people read it because... I don't know how many of you may remember this, but there was a time when there were many people in the world who lived on so-called blink time. Blink time was people who couldn't be bothered to figure out how to work their VCR and uh, set the time on it, and uh, they, because they wouldn't, couldn't be bothered to actually read the manual, and so their VCR would just sit there and blink. And the thing is, it meant that they were never able to record anything off of TV because you can't record stuff. Well, you could record stuff off of TV if you, like, you know, stuck the thing in and set it to the right channel, which at one point in time was easier than it is. It was way easier earlier on than it was later, actually. Uh, and, you know, you'd just stick it in, set it to that channel and hit record and it would record whatever but you couldn't set it to record on a timer unless you could set the clock so that you could tell it to record X channel at Y time. And the way you figured out how to do that was with the manual. The manual that came in the box with your VCR. The way the manual that came in the box with your DVD player. The manual that would come in the box with any of your electronic devices would show you how to, would, would explain how to use the thing. You would open it up and it would you know, tell you here's how you turn it on, here's how you plug it in, here's what all the buttons do, here's how you do the thing with the buttons. And so manuals were always a very big thing to me very early on because I never wanted to be that person living on blink time. I wanted to understand how to set up my thing and how to use it and to know how to deal with that particular device. Manuals, always very, very important. Also, another type of manual, so to speak, is the video game manual, which is something that has been obviated by time. You know, back a million years ago, in the 1980s and 1990s, what we would do is, we, what would happen is you would buy your game in an actual box from an actual store and there would be like a whole box and that box would have not just the discs in it for the game but it would also have a thing that explained to you how to play the game. It would tell you, you know, hints about where stuff is and how to, what all the controls in the game were, that it would give you all of this information in a handy dandy little thing that you could open up and have right next to you while you were playing. In point of fact, some games had that as kind of a security device in order to keep people from pirating the game where you would say, you know, what's the fifth word on page six of the manual? And if you didn't have the manual, you wouldn't be able to take it open page it to page six and look at what the fifth word was. Uh, and manuals were a thing for a good many years until games wound up with enough memory so that the directions on how to, you know, use the controls uh, for your, you know, for whatever you were playing the game on, be it a computer or a, you know, gaming thing like a Nintendo Entertainment System or a Sega or whatever, 
uh, you know, you could, you, you would, instead of having a little booklet, you would have a series of menus, and the menus would have stuff on it because they finally had the memory space to do that. And once that happened, once they started having enough memory space for so-called tutorial levels where they would walk you through how to play the game, manuals started disappearing. And manuals have been disappearing for a long time now. Um, bit by bit, we've had fewer and fewer manuals appearing in electronic devices, and the manuals get thinner and thinner. They get less and less detailed, less and less useful. And we are now at the point where manual, where one is genuinely surprised, as I was, to find a manual. I had to buy a new clock radio recently because I like clock radios. I don't particularly like using my cell phone for that because I don't want something that can have a call coming through waking me up. I want something that will just wake me up at the appropriate time. And so I have a clock radio. Uh, also, I am an old lady who never uses her cell phone anyways, so there you go. I am ancient and decrepit or something. I was shocked, actually, in a way, to find a actual manual, an honest-to-goodness manual pictured here, which actually, exp well, it explained poorly, because there are a lot of manuals that are very, very poorly written and having complete instructions, because some people are just bad at instructions, but it actually had a manual. I have a little booklet that I can pull out whenever I want to, to figure out how to use the thing. and. That was a surprise, because we've had several incidents around here at home. Indeed, my father one time complained to me that he received a, he received a thing that not only did it not have a manual in the box, it also did not have uh, the little slip of paper on it telling him where to find a manual. Because that's a thing that we get a lot nowadays, of course, is the internet manual, the you bought this thing, go to this website, and we'll have our directions on how to use it. Um, I personally think that runs the risk of being problematic, because what happens if the thing that you need is the thing that you would use, that you need to learn how to use is the thing that you would use to access the internet, in which case you're caught in an unending catch-22, you know, cycle of, I need the internet to figure out how to work my thing, but I can't work my thing until I have it explained to me, but I need, but I can't access the internet without the thing, but I need to access the internet in order to understand how to access the internet, and so on. You know, I've, I've had several things, though, They where they just say, if you want to understand how to work it, go to this website, we have it there. My father complained bitterly about getting something where it didn't even give him a website to go to to explain how to use the thing, whatever it was. I don't remember what electric device it was, but the point is, uh, this is a problem. This is a big, big problem, this we're not going to provide you with a manual, because among other things, I found that manuals are often easier, often less trouble to deal with than a complex internet manual. Very often, now granted, a lot of people are doing this on their phones rather than like me on a laptop, but, uh, Manuals are wonderfully useful things to have because the manual doesn't require a battery to run. The manual you can stick away in a drawer somewhere and pull it out whenever you need it. You don't have to look it up every time you need it. Because the thing is, you know, that's the problem with having a manual online unless you're going to save the PDF, assuming that this thing actually decides to leave the PDF accessible, make it PDFable, downloadable, whatever. Uh, there's just, there are so many things that there is a valid use for having a small booklet that you can just have in your hands in front of you to look at when you're trying to deal with your device in question. I frankly think that in a lot of ways, the video game manual is also a thing that would be useful because you could have that open next to you on the couch when you're playing your video game or on the desk next to you if you're at a desk playing on a laptop or gaming computer or what have you.
because then you don't have to go into all the menus to find out the thing. You can just look in the manual without having to go into that. It's why paper menus are so much better than, you know, other things is because you can look that up without having to go online and, and, and have to look something up online if you just want to check on things. But, you know, I'm an old lady. I don't like, I apparently don't like the internet enough, uh, for this sort. I just, manuals. They're like little tiny books, but they're full of, they're like little tiny books that explain to you just how to use a thing. And, you know, there's something that in some ways we're missing, even though we should have them, but they're also kind of an artifact of that same earlier age when people would make books with, you know, like my uh, Labels for Locals book, which I believe I reviewed earlier on this channel, where, you know, you just have a list of the endings of, of city and region names and, you know, how to identify per a person whether they're a Londoner or a Torontonian as opposed to a Torontoer or a Londonian. Um, you know, we, we used to have books for things like that. And manuals, they fall under that same auspices of, they're not books, they're booklets, but they're like little tiny books, which is why they're called booklets. Um, you know, that, that explain how to use a thing, how to do a thing, how to fix a thing, build a thing. You know, the, they're the little instructional sheets that come with your Ikea furniture that, however abstractly, tell you how to put it together so that you, you know, have an end table. And I like manuals. I always like manuals, and I'm always disappointed and unhappy when I get a new electronic device and there is no manual, because frankly, I think directions should always come with anything that's going to need directions, because there's always something that you don't know. There's always something that you're going to miss, and there's always going to be a functionality that you wouldn't know about if you didn't have a manual. So, manuals. Important. Like them. I happen to think that, uh, I happen to think that they're becoming a lost art. So, you know, take this as you will. Uh, I know this is the weirdest anniversary special event ever, but it's important to me. Manuals are important to me because I think that we all need to think about not living on blink time. Because, you know what? I would have been ashamed to be living on blink time back in the 1990s and I don't want to start now, which is basically my metaphor for not knowing how to work a thing because you can't be bothered to read the thing that explains how it works. So there you go, everybody. Let's, let's root for manuals to be packaged with things again, instead of little slips of paper saying, go to our website, and if you're lucky, you'll be able to find directions on how to use it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's, that's the end of my anniversary special. A little bit short this year, but, uh, I just, I needed to get this one off my chest. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is the end of, of the discussion of manuals, and, uh, see you at the ninth anniversary special when I figure out what book adjacent thing I'm going to talk about next year. Uh, so that's everything, and I will see you all next week.